Hi, my name's Trev Hutchings, and this is how to record a song in Cakewalk using MIDI and audio sample loops. At the top left of the screen, click on Views. Then click on Matrix View on the pop-up menu. Now click on the first pad in the matrix pane. Now right mouse click on the pad and click on import file on the pop-up menu. Then click on audio file and then click on OK. Now here I've got for audio samples. And I'm going to click on this one here, which is my G chord C. And obviously for yourself, um, you need to click on an audio file on your own system. And then click on open. Now you'll see that this sample has now been opened in the first pad on the matrix. And you'll notice that it's now given this line, this matrix audio row one heading. And if you look in the track pane, you'll see that this has been added here. This is the same track. So anything that's recorded on this row of pads will be recorded or we will record to this audio track. Now to play this sample, you just need to come down and click on this play icon on the sample. And click on the play icon again to stop the sample from playing. And now I'm going to click on some more pads in the same row and add some more audio samples. So right mouse click. Click on import and click this time on my A chord. Open that one. And I'm going to right mouse click again, import file. I'm going to click on G chord. Click on open. And you'll notice every time I right mouse click and then click on import, it's not asking me now whether I want an audio file or a MIDI file. And that's because all the files on this row now, this row has now been officially set as an audio row. So any samples that come into this particular row on the matrix have to be audio. So I'm going to finish off here by bringing in my F chord. And you'll notice that the name of each file has been added to these pads. So I can see this is my chord C, my chord A, chord G and chord F, because that's what I called the samples. And to change between the samples, if I start the first chord C, I'm gonna then click on the play icon on the chord A, and it will transfer from chord C to chord A. And you'll notice when I click on the play icon, what is actually happening is the new chord doesn't start until the end of the bar measure. And that's because this little bit here where it says bar measure, this is a drop list here. And if I click on the drop list, you see that you get these options. And at the moment it's set to measure. Now if you click on immediate, it means that when you click on the play icon, it'll immediately come in and replace the other sample. And if I click on it again, you'll see that we've got other options, like if you want it to be to replace quicker than at the end of the bar, but you want it to stay in time with the beat, you can either click on beat, which will give you basically one over four.
or you can go for something that's much quicker. So if you go all the way down to one over 64, so that's 1 64th, it'll be almost like being immediate, but it will still be in time with your song. And of course, I can do that with any of these four pads. But I'm going to set that back to measure. Now the other thing with these samples is at the moment they're set to loop. So when they reach the end of the sample they go round again. But there's this little loop icon on each one of these pads. And if you press on that loop icon, it'll switch it over to this long arrow, which means it'll play just once. And then stop playing. And the other one you have here, which is next to the loop one, is this trigger option. And at the moment, when you click on the play icon, it will play the sample all the way through. But if you click on this trigger icon, it'll change it so it only plays for as long as you hold down the play icon. Now you also have these same two icons up here, and these are for the global. So you see all these ones over here, these pads here, these icons are lit up in blue at the moment. So if I change this one here from loop to just playing straight through, you'll see that these icons on these three pads have changed to straight through. But the one on the first pad has stayed as loop. Now, if I want to change that so they are all global, because once you've changed this pad, if I click on that, you'll see as soon as I've clicked on it, it no longer is blue, it goes gray. So it's no longer controlled by the global. And of course I can do the same with the trigger. So I can change the trigger as well. But if I want all these to go blue again, all I need to do is press down on the control key on the keyboard and then click on this icon and then it goes back to being global. So if I set that back to loop, you'll see that these this one has gone back to loop with the other two. And if I now click, if I put that back onto straight, so it's slightly more obvious. Now, if I go over here to this one here, press down on the control key on the keyboard and then click on this one, you'll see it's lit up and it's automatically changed to play once through because that's what the global setting is. And I can do the same with the trigger, press down on the control key on the keyboard and click on that and they all are now back to global. Now we can also bring in MIDI patterns as well as audio samples. So to do this, I'm gonna move up to this plugins and media etc section over at the right hand side of the screen and I'm going to click on media and under media at the moment it says audio import and above that there is this move up one level icon and if I click on that it takes me out of that folder to the next folder up and here I've got this MIDI library folder so if I double click on that one it then opens all these MIDI groups. And if I double click on the one for drums, I get all these options of patterns that are, that are already built into Cakewalk. And if I click on the house one here, for instance, double click on that, we get all these ones come up. But if I click on one, nothing happens and I can't hear the beat. 
which is not very helpful. So what I'm going to do now is click on plugins. And then I'm going to go to this one here, which is the virtual instruments icon and click on that. I'm going to come down here to the general MIDI and click on the plus icon to the left of the general MIDI folder. And then I'm going to double click on Cakewalk TTS1. Then this setup screen appears and I'll just click on OK for that. And the TTS1 is added to my song. And now if I go back to media and click on the house one again, oops, not like that. If I click on house one there, here we go. Stop that playing. So now I can hear the MIDI beats and I can choose them based on the sound just by clicking on the MIDI beat image icon. So now I'm just going to close this Cakewalk TTS1 window down. And before I do that, I'll just point out here that these MIDI patterns are running as a drum pattern. So they're actually coming out on channel 10. And you'll notice here that channel 10 is set to standard set, which is a drum kit. If I click on there and go to preset and go to drum sets, this is the one that it's currently set to. So I can actually change that and go down there to room if I want and then play it. And then you'll hear that it's a different drum kit. I'll leave it on that one for the moment. So I'm just going to close this window down so we can see what's going on underneath. So I'm just going to stick with these house one and house two for the moment. So I'm going to drag this house one down onto the second row, pad one. And you'll see now that this matrix MIDI row two has appeared. So this is the track that's now linked to these MIDI pads. And if I add the second house drum one to the second pad, and I can run them exactly the same way from the matrix as I did with the audio samples. And I'll just add a couple more here. So now I can simply press on whichever pads I want and I can play a combination accordingly. So I can set the drums off here and then play the audio samples over the top of it. Now you'll also notice that just above these two rows is these headers, one, two, three, and four. And these are the start stop icons for the whole column. So if I press on one, it'll start playing the chord C sample and the drum beat. Then if I click on two, it'll transfer over to the two pads in column two. And if I click on the pad again, it will stop playback. So here you can set up a column of pads and play each column by pressing on the header for each column. Now, sometimes you might want to play samples from different columns. And if you want to stop the playback of all these different pads at the same time, then you can click on this icon here 
which will stop all the pads. So if I start a couple here, that icon stops all the pads from playing. Now all this is kind of great, but the thing we want to do really is record it. And that's quite easy because all we need to do is press on the record icon on the matrix. But then you have to press on the record button on each of the matrix row tracks as well. Now personally, I prefer to go down, right mouse click on the blank area and click on insert track folder. Rename that matrix. Then select the matrix tracks. And I've clicked on the first one and I'm going to control click on the second one. So those two have been selected. Then right mouse click and then move to folder on the pop up menu and then to matrix, which is what I called the folder. So these are both in the folder now, so I can I can literally just use the record icon on the folder to turn on all the matrix tracks at once. And then all I have to do to start recording is click on the record button at the top of the screen here and then start my samples either by clicking on the the pad play icons or by clicking on the column play icons. And then you'll see on these two tracks, I've got the recordings. So these are now independent of the pads. It doesn't just make a mark and say, start the pad here, start the pad there. It's, it has actually recorded these pads as if you had created the audio and the MIDI patterns by hand. If you enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up and click on that subscribe button. Cheers.